Hi, Paul from Power Wash Store here. Today we're going to talk about chemical injectors, specifically downstream injectors. So downstream injectors come in a couple of different uh, types. We have what's called an adjustable injector. This has a knob on the bottom. There are several brands, but they'll all have some sort of knob on it. You can turn this knob left or right. Uh, the more you tighten it up and move it up, typically what that does is restrict the flow. This will allow you to meter the draw rate on the chemical injector. The more you open it, the better it will draw. We have what's called a fixed injector, which typically just has a barb on it. And then we have another uh, new style uh, fixed injector that we have an aftermarket check valve built on there. Now this particular check valve was built with an extremely low cracking pressure. So it's less than a half pound cracking pressure, but it is still rated for 5,000 PSI. So it can handle the back pressure. This larger open check valve allows for a little bit better flow. So that's another style of check valve. Uh, it's actually out of a machine body, so we can screw that directly in without any special fittings. Now, each of these injectors will have installed inside of it what's called an injector orifice. And this injector orifice that's inside the body of the injector here is sized to the flow of your machine. So they're typically like a 1.8 or a 2.1 or a 2.3. Those sizes are designed to match up to the flow of your machine. Uh, the machine, a 1.8 is typically for a four gallon a minute. A 2.1 would be for uh, five to six gallons a minute. And a 2.3 would be for uh, five to eight gallons a minute. But typically once you get up to eight gallons a minute or higher. Um, and what that means is inside here, if you look down inside, there's an orifice. And if we pull that out, this particular one pulls out with an Allen wrench. You can see there's an orifice inside here. And this is actually what creates the venturi. Now the way the chemical injector works is the water flows in through the orifice side and it always flows in through the orifice side. If you don't have numbers or arrows on there that you can't see for the direction of flow, all you have to do is look at the inlet side and there will be the orifice in there. Um, same thing on any of these other injectors. So if the arrow is not visible, that's how you tell the directional flow. So as the water flows through the injector, this orifice is set back inside the chamber. So if you imagine a chamber like this, the orifice is this cone shape that sits right inside of there like that. You have a cone, so as the water flows through, it creates an area of high pressure because the water's uh, injected through at high pressure. and this creates a venturi in this chamber or a vacuum in this chamber, which draws the chemical up through the bottom of the barb here into the injector. Now, the only way that that venturi works is that on the outlet side, you have to have low pressure. This is where we use like a dual lance wand or a black soap tip. Typically, we have to drop that pressure below 1000 PSI to get it to draw. The lower the pressure, the better the flow on the outlet side the better your draw rate will be. So if I'm pushing right at 800 PSI, I'm gonna get it to draw a chemical, gonna, but it's going to be a much weaker mix because of the back pressure created. If I can get it down below 500, typically I'll have a maximum draw rate on there. Each of these injectors is equipped with some sort of a check ball so that when you do go to high pressure, it does not allow the water to flow through. Here we have a mechanical check. It's pretty simple. Um, the direction of flow is on here. So that when the fluid comes in, the little uh, inside here, the little uh, seat will get pushed up with the chemical draw. On these style injectors, there's actually what inside here what's called a ball and spring check. And I'll open this up to kind of show you how it works. Now this check injector uses is a ceramic injector or an acid injector it's called. It uses a ceramic ball as the check valve and a stainless spring and a Viton O-ring. This is the best style to use when you're injecting any types of acids or bleach, extremely corrosive products. Um, I'm gonna dump this out here and you can see that we have a ceramic ball and spring. Inside the bottom of this barb, there's an O-ring in there. So what happens is that when you're drawing, this ball lifts up off the bottom, off the O-ring, allows the chemical to draw through and past it. And when you're, the spring keeps it from seating tight against the opening here in the injector itself. Um, and that allows the chemical to come in. And when you go into high pressure mode, 
the ball seats back down onto the O-ring and pre prevents your water from pushing out the barb. If you ever see the water coming out of the barb, that's typically a sign that either this ball has dissolved or the O-ring has broken up and gone away. Now there are repair kits for it. This particular one has a stainless ball, uh, but you can get them with a ceramic ball. They're usually less expensive than the injector and uh, these can be repaired. One of the other things that can happen that can damage this is on the orifice itself. You can see it's a really nice shaped cone, but as you're drawing in uh, aggressive chemicals, things like acids and two-step washing or bleaches, uh, they will begin to dissolve the edge of the stainless cone. And what that does is that affects the spray pattern going through the body of the injector itself and impacts the uh, venturi action. Also what can happen, which I've seen, uh, a piece of Teflon tape can get stuck in this orifice and affect the, uh, again, the venturi in that chamber where the cone comes through. As the water flows through, if anything gets in there, it'll affect that from going through and jumping across to the other side of the opening here on the other side and creating that vacuum. You can suck up little pieces of plastic, tape, string through your barb on your inlet side, and that can also affect it. So that's just a couple of things that can go wrong. So the draw rates of these injectors are gonna vary. Uh, this is a typically a, what's called a 20% injector, up to 20%, and that's gonna vary based on the amount of chemical or the amount of water flowing through the injector itself. So the draw rate is typically between 80 and about 100 to 110 ounces per minute, depending on the amount of venturi. You can't really exceed that on a draw rate. So if you're running eight gallons a minute, Keep in mind, you're only going to be bringing in about 110 ounces a minute, so your percentage is going to be a lot lower. One of the things you can do to combat this, if you do have an 8-gallon a minute unit, go down to a 2.1 or a 1.8 injector, and what that will typically do with a trap pressure and loader is allow the flow to be restricted while you're drawing chemicals so you can get a much higher concentration. Then you can use a what's called a chemical injector bypass kit, uh, and it basically a ball valve you open up that allows the fluid to bypass the chemical injector and get full flow for rinsing. So that is the downstream injectors and how they function.